Okay, but um, those are available to you. Like I said, you can use that sheet on tests and quizzes. Um, just hold on to it. I want to today kind of talk about actually using them. Okay, actually um, having an application for those conversions. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is kind of talk about this one here. So a student uh, ran the 50 yard dash in 5.8 seconds. Okay, so at what speed did the student run in miles per hour? Okay, uh, those of you that are in sports, you might run the 40 yard dash, right? That's a that's a measurement tool that we use to compare athletes and, and football and baseball and that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, which we can compare, like if I run a 4.9 and Travis runs a 5.1, I'm faster than him, right? Does that make sense? Okay. But how does that relate to maybe the most the common person? How do they kind of judge how fast that is? If, if you're a person that's never ran 4.9, do you really know how fast that is? If you've never ran a 50-yard dash in 5.8 seconds, do you really know how fast that is? Okay. When we're talking about speed, what are the units that you are most familiar with in terms of speed? Miles per hour. So let's see how fast this person is running in miles per hour. Okay. So we're going to say that for every 50 yards, so this is how we write this, for every 50 yards, it takes this person 5.8 seconds to complete those 50 yards. Does that make sense? Okay. Now that is a rate. It's not a unit rate. Okay. A unit rate would be when the denominator has a one as the, the value instead of a 5.8. Okay. So maybe it'd be nice to, if I actually did the division here and got a number 50 divided by 5.8, whatever that is, and I say that many yards per every one second, that would be a unit rate. Okay. Um, but this is equivalent. Okay. Um, we want to get our answer into something that makes more sense to us. Miles per hour. So miles per hour, algebraically with our units, looks like that. Miles and then division and then hour. Okay? We want to go through the process of trying to manipulate these units so that yards and seconds disappear, but miles and hours show up. So going off of what we talked about yesterday, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to try to get that unit to cancel out. And in order to do that, I need to put that unit right there. That's the same step every single time. Okay? Now that I've got yards there, I'm going to just cross them out. So I remind myself that they have canceled. But now what I need is a numerator. Okay? And remember, this red fraction has to be a conversion factor, meaning whatever number I use for yards here, whatever distance that's going to be, has to be the same distance that is going to be in the numerator for whatever unit I use in the numerator. So do we have a way to go from yards to miles? Because that's my overall goal, right, is to get my distance into terms of miles. If we look at our conversion facts, okay, on that sheet, or maybe we know these in, based on uh, memory, is there a link between yards and miles? Do we have a way of doing that? Well, you could do that, but if I go from miles to meters, miles and meters are different systems. So miles and yards are in the same U.S. standard system. Meters is in the metric system. Okay, so I don't need, I don't want to go across systems here. Because if I go across the system, then I got to come back across eventually. Okay. So if we look at that first uh, table there on the Ohio State test reference sheet side, uh, the first column says one mile is equal to 1,760 yards, right? All right. So if I put those numbers in, I usually put these numbers in last, but you can do it as you're going. If I were to multiply everything out right now, my answer would be in miles per second. Does that make sense? Across the top, those are the only units I have left over is miles. Across the bottom, the only unit I have is seconds. Well, I don't want miles per second. I want miles per hour, right? So let's do one more thing of multiplication here. 
And what I want is I want this second now to go away. Miles is fine. Miles is what I need in the numerator, right? So seconds now needs to cancel. Well, seconds starts in the denominator. Then in order for it to cancel, I need seconds up here, right? Does that make sense? The only time that they can cancel is I have one in the top and one on the bottom. Okay? Now, if that's going to happen, so I'm going to put seconds up there. Now, think about this. I want to get to hours in the bottom, right? Does anybody know how many seconds there are in an hour? Not off the top of your head probably, right? Okay. Does anybody know how many seconds are in a minute? Okay, that one's easy. That's, that's a more commonly known conversion factor. So instead of going straight from seconds to hours, let's go seconds to minutes. You said 60 seconds for every one minute, right? Would you agree now that the S's for seconds would cancel? And now as you multiply the numerator, what's the only unit left in the numerator? Careful, MI's. Miles, okay? So if, I, if I'm going across the top, I've got miles being the only thing left over from that middle fraction, right? Across the bottom, the only unit I have left over is minutes. So right now, that product of three terms would leave me a rate in terms of miles per minute. Getting closer to what we want, right? We had miles per second. We added this 60 over 1. That's going to give us miles per minute. Now we want minutes to cancel, we want minutes to cancel. So I'm going to do one more multiplication. I'll put minutes here. Cancel, cancel. Okay. Do we have a link from minutes to get us to hours? Do you know how many minutes are in an hour? 60. So what I hope you guys see here is that each one of those fractions, the red fraction, the orange fraction, the blue fraction, the top amount is the same as the bottom amount. If I were to take one mile, maybe I had a, a measuring tool, like a ruler, that is one mile off. And then I lay next to it 1,760 yardsticks. Would they equate to the same distance? Yes. Okay. If you were to uh, take a stopwatch and click it and it counted the 60 seconds, would that be the same as if you took a clock or stopwatch and it counted just one minute? They're the same time intervals, right? Same thing for 60 minutes and one hour, okay? So those conversion factors talk about the same item, same object, okay? But using different quantities and different units to do that, okay? But 60 minutes is exactly the same thing as one hour, right? One mile is exactly the same thing as 1760 yards. Um, now that we're done here, we've got miles, when I'm all flights right across, I get miles up top, and I get hours on the bottom, okay? Something that we could have done, this might be a fact that maybe you want to commit to memory, if I want to go from seconds to hours, 60 times 60 does that, okay? So there are 3,600 seconds for every one hour. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, if you want to commit that to memory or not, it might be useful later on. Okay, now what we can do is actually do the multiplication. We now have atop the, or across the top, we got 50 times 60 times 60. And on the bottom, we have 5.8 times 1760. And then I'm going to grab a calculator. And just see what that evaluates to. Let's try and make this so you guys can see everything. Yeah, 5.8 times, yeah, yeah. So we got 50 times 60 times 60. Divided by 5.8 times 1760. And it gives me that number right there. So that number right there, the units of that would be miles per hour. Does that make sense? 
So when this person runs 50 yards at 5.8 seconds, okay, they are actually running at 17.6 miles per hour. That make sense? If I put two people next to each other, I say, we're both going to run 50 yards. And I tell one person, your rate is going to be 50 yards per 5.8 seconds. I tell the other person, your rate is going to be 17.63 miles per hour. Who finishes first? They're the same number, aren't they? They're the same speed. Does that make sense? It's just using different units to express that speed. My argument to why we want to do this is are you more comfortable knowing how, how you can compare like what you are familiar with in your everyday life to what 17.63 miles per hour feels like? You drove to school here today, right? Whether you got on a bus, parents brought you, you drove yourself, whatever, you might know what 17.6 miles per hour feels like. If I were to ask you, what's it feel like to, to run 50 yards in 5.8 sec, sec, seconds, you probably don't know what that feels like. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, let's do another one real quick. If I've got... Um, huh? That's how slow you are? Okay. So you said 40 yards. And you run your 40 in 5.6. Okay. So, so we got 1760 yards for every one mile, right? Yards cancel, yards cancel. Now, okay, I, want, I got my miles, right? Correct? That's my, that's my overall unit that I want over here. Okay. So now I'm going to multiply to get these seconds to go away. So I need seconds up here. And I'm going to put minutes down here. So 60 seconds for every one minute. And now my seconds would cancel. And now I need minutes up here and hours to go here so that my minutes cancel the minutes. And all I'm left with in the bottom is hours, right? So 60 minutes for every one hour. So if I want to see how slow I am, we can take 40 plus times 60 times 60. And you said you ran it in 5.6. So that's what that bottom would be, 5.6 times 1, 7, or 1760 times 1 times 1. So you're reaching a maximum speed of 14.6 miles per hour. Huh? Yeah. So the idea here is now, if you give me like 40 yards and I'm going to run it in 5.6, but let's say somebody runs the 40 yards in 4.9, the only thing that changes is that number at the bottom. So now somebody that runs the 4.9 is running 16 miles per hour. Do, uh, can you do like 4.1? Four, Okay, so 160, 160 yards, you say 11.3 seconds, 11 point what, that, that, that there, okay. Okay, so here's the thing then, can we... Look, look, at we, look at the units we're starting with, yards over seconds, right? Is that the same thing that we did in the last two examples? Okay. So then isn't the conversion of miles per hour going to be the same? Meaning that I'm going to multiply by yards or miles over yards, and then I'll multiply by seconds over minutes, and I'll multiply by minutes over hours. Does that yard cancel with that yard, that second with that second, this minute and that minute, that hour. Oh, I wanted that hour to stay. This is my equal sign here. So when I do that, I've got miles on top, hours on the bottom, right? It's still 1, 17, 60, 60, 1, 60, and 1. Okay, so when I multiply that out, so 106 yards, so the top would be 106 times 60 times 60, and the bottom would be 11.3. Okay, 
Okay, so it's 19.8 or 19.2 miles per hour. Okay. Um, but we should be able to, so the idea, guys, is that we should be able to take any, any distance that we want to travel in regards to any time frame that we want to do it, seconds, minutes, hours, weeks, something like that, and convert it to any other unit based off distance and time, okay, by using that multiplication that we just went through there. Um, let's do a couple of, of these conversions. These are similar to what you do in your homework, okay, just to get us in the flow of things. These are, they should not be extremely difficult, okay, um, because, and I think these, these ones here that we did, I mean, there's, there's three conversion facts that you have to use there, okay? Um, a lot of the ones you do in your homework might only need one or two, okay? I told the last class, I'm going to be honest with you guys, in, in regards to algebra, this stuff is not huge in regards to what we're going to cover for the rest of this year, okay? It becomes very useful in integrated two, okay, or geometry, Okay, so we will use a lot of this unit conversion in geometry. Uh, but when you get to your sciences, your chemistries, your um, physics, and, and those types of, of courses, you will do this type of stuff on every single problem. All right? And when you get to those courses, and you can ask some of your peers that have maybe already taken these courses, those science teachers don't reteach really this stuff because they think, and, they, and they're thinking on the right level, that you've gotten this stuff in algebra. Yeah, you, you've received this um, instruction and developed this skill. So my whole thought is that we don't don't just say, oh, I don't need this because it's not going to be, I, you know, we'll go two, three weeks and we're not going to see much of this anymore. Okay, it might pop up every once in a while in this course, but it's going to be on every day, every problem thing in your sciences. Um, okay, so 63 yards to feet. So every time I do one of these, I'm going to start with 63 yards. I'm always going to put it over one, okay? The last one we did, we had 50 yards for every 5.3 seconds or 5.8 seconds, whatever it was. We knew we value for our denominator. Now our denominator is just a one, okay? Um, and I want to change this to feet. So what should the unit right here in the second fraction be? Okay, so the denominator needs to be yards. That allows those to cancel, right? And now you said feet, right? Feet, because I know that that's what my answer needs to be in, right? So I asked myself at this stage, is there a link between feet and yards? And we answer that with a yes. There's a three feet for every one yard, right? And what you're going to find out, guys, is that most of these, you're either going to divide by your conversion factor or you're going to multiply by it. Okay, and there's always a group, a small group of students that say, oh, I'm always going to multiply, so that's all I ever do. Or I'm always going to divide because I've seen a couple, three or four that I've, I divide, and that's all I'm going to do. You really don't know whether you're going to divide or multiply until you understand how your units are going to operate with one another. So I have to write this down. Uh, so now I see what am I really only going to be doing here. Huh? You're going to, this means multiply, right? So when I multiply fractions, it's multiply straight across the top, right? And then I multiply straight across the bottom, but what are those bottoms? One. So really, I could just say that I'm multiplying my 63 yards by 3 feet, right? So it gives me 189 feet. Now, other times, maybe I get 63 times 1 over 3, and then I would be dividing by 3 instead of multiplying by 3. Does that make sense? So whether you do multiplication division is all predicated off of how your units need to operate. Okay? For instance, I, see, I think we see that in uh, this one here. If I want to go from hours to days. Okay? Well, in this one, I multiply. But if I go from 168 hours into days, Okay, I need what unit on the bottom here? Hours. And then what unit will be on top? Days. Okay, so now what's the link between days and hours? 
Yeah, one day is 24 hours, right? So now when I multiply, I get 168 times 1, and I get 1 times 24. So now what am I really doing with that 24? I'm dividing now. Does that make sense? Okay. If I do, I believe, is that 7? Yeah. So it should be 7 days. So how many weeks is 168 hours? One. Now, you do that in your head easily, right? But you know seven days is one week. That's a conversion factor. Okay, we can do multiplication if we want to. Um, next one, 2.5 pounds to ounces. How many pounds are there in an hour? How many ounces are there in a pound? 16. Okay. Now, I about misspoke. And I about said how many pounds are there in an ounce? I could answer that. Okay? But the answer to that is that there's one sixteenth of a pound in every ounce. Does that make sense? And I think that's hard to kind of use and, and uh, think about. Okay? Um, so what I always like to do is try to figure out, okay, which one's bigger? And we should have an understanding, I think, just because of being 14, 15 years old, that a pound is bigger than an ounce, right? Okay? So I always let my larger quantity, my larger item, kind of carry the value of one. So I know a pound is bigger than an ounce, so I'm going to let the pound be one. So in one pound, I have how many ounces? Sixteen. And when the pounds cancel out, what am I left with? Should be 40 ounces, right? Sixteen times two is 32. And then a half of 16 is 8, so if I add those together, I get 40. So 40 ounces. Okay? Now, the next, the next ones I'm going to, we're going to skip the 4 minutes to seconds. I think you guys can do that. Um, let's talk about the meters and centimeters one. If I have 200 centimeters, and I want to get this into meters, Okay, what unit, should put one on these, but what unit should I have down here now? Centimeters. Okay, now there is always, no matter what you're talking about, centimeters to meters, millimeters to meters, nanometers to meters, gigameters to meters, whatever you're using. If it says meter in the names, there's always a link between them. Okay, so when I say centimeter to meter, is there a link between those? Absolutely, absolutely there is. Which one is bigger, meters or centimeters? Meters. The, lar the, the, the meter is larger. So, how, so I'll put one with that. How many centimeters are there in a meter? A hundred. Okay. The prefix centi refers to a hundred. Okay. So now if I look at that, the centimeters units drop out, right? And now if I have 200 times 1, and then 1 times 100, I have 200 over 100. What's that going to give me? Two. 2 meters. So 200 centimeters is 2 meters, right? Okay. Now, I want to show you something else. Have you ever heard the phrase, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about how that thing works. All right, so here's, here's the thing. When we are using our U.S. standard system, okay? So 12 inches is one foot, right? There's nothing like 12, if I double that, or let's oh, say if I take 12 and I maybe square, I get 144. Well, 144 doesn't equal anything real nice, like a mile or anything, okay? But if I take um, like a decameter, and I square it and make it 100 decameters or something like that. That's going to put me in another position on this list of kilo, hecta, deca, base, deci, centi, or milli. Because it's a base of 10. Okay? The English system is not a base of 10. Think about centi. And you guys maybe know this. Centi, you said meant 100, right? Okay? 
Um, and I'm going to write this. We're going to write this as 10 to negative 2 or 1 over 100. Okay? So whenever I see the prefix centi, I'm talking about one thing out of 100. Does that make sense? Okay? When I think about milli, 10 to the negative 3, that is one out of 1,000. Milli refers to one of 1,000. Okay? So we're talking about the things that are to the right of a decimal place here. Okay? Deci is 10 to the negative first, which is the same thing as 1 over 10. Okay? What we've got going on here, if we think about our decimals, okay, and our number system, our number system is a base 10 number system. So after the decimal place, to the right, we have your um, tenths place because of that. The next decimal place is your hundredths. The next one is your thousandths. Then you get to your ten thousandths and your hundred thousandths and then your millionths, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so the metric system is designed with these powers of 10 to be something that allows us to do conversions much quicker than what our English system does. In our English system or our, our standard U.S. standard system, we have to remember 1 foot to 12 inches. We have to remember 1 mile, 17, or 1,760 yards. We have to memorize those facts. With this, if we know what powers of 10 look like, we should be okay. Okay, so this is 10 to negative third, 10 to negative two, 10 to negative one. What do you think this one is? Zero. 10 to zero. Anybody know what 10 to the zero is? Zero. Oh. It's one. Any, anything raised to the zero power is one. Okay, now this is our base, meaning our base is going to be meters. If we're talking about distance, it's going to be grams. If we're talking about mass, and it's going to be liters, okay, and sometimes because we're talking, this is, this is originated in France, okay, so sometimes uh, liters is spelled L-I-T-E-R-S, which we're used to, or L-I-T-R-E-S, which what they're used to, right? Okay, you know, and like, when you see C-O-L-O-R, that says color, right? But if you get something from Europe that says color, it's C-O-L-O-U-R, right? Okay. Uh, that's just the, just the way they spell things a little bit differently than we do. That's fine. Um, what do you think this is? If that's 10 to the 0, what do you think this is? 10 to the 1st, which is just 10, right? This would be 10 squared, so that means 100. So this means 10 cubed, so that means 1,000, right? So what this means, guys, is that if I have a, let's just say, deca meter. That means I have 10 of whatever a meter is. Does that make sense? If I have a heck to meter, that means I have 100 of whatever the meter was. Does that make sense? Or whatever my base was. If I have a kilo, okay, so I've, I hear people say kilometer, which is fine, okay, a kilometer is probably what we, I think that's what most people will say. But that means I have a thousand of my meters, right? Okay. This over here, if I say centi, that means I have one, one of the 100 parts that make up my base, that make up my meter. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Now, you guys remember that since King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. Okay. That's a... Uh, Kind of a mnemonic device to remember that, right? Okay, it's a phrase that allows you to say, okay, this is the order that these prefixes go. Does anybody know the next one over? Think about this. So you guys, you guys have talked about meters and grams and liters. In computer sciences, we have bytes, don't we? Do you have kilobytes? Okay. If I have kilobytes, what's the, what's the next one up from kilobytes? Say again. Megabytes. Megabytes is first. Okay. Megabytes is first. So that's millions. Okay. So a megabyte uh, is a million kilobytes. Does that make sense? 
Okay? I'm going to rephrase that. A megabyte is a million bytes. Okay? Not a million kilobytes. A, a megabyte is a million bytes. Um, and these are, these are pieces of data, right? Okay? That's how we, that's how we uh, measure data. The next one up, okay, is gigabyte. Gigabyte. So a gigabyte, what a gigabyte is, is a billion bytes. What's the next one? Terabyte. Terabyte. Terabyte is a trillion bytes. Does that make sense, everybody? And, there's, and it keeps going, okay? Now, what maybe you've also heard of is, if this is milli, okay, if this is milli, does anybody know the next one over? What's a thousand, what's a millionth of a meter or something like that? You ever heard the word nano? Oh, nanometer. Oh, sorry, I, let me, I, I, I messed up. Micro, no, micro, no. micro is first. It was milli, micro, then nano, and then pico, okay? Um, but we don't, I mean, we're not measuring things on that small of a scale, right? On that small of a scale, we're talking like atoms and that kind of stuff, okay? Um, but this is how we use this thing. If I have something, let's say we had 200, 200 centimeters, right? All right, so what we do, okay, this is important, we'll pay attention to this. I have 200 centimeters, so I put that in this column. And I want to go to meters. Well, meters is the base, right? Meters is the thing that's in this column. All I've got to do is think about how many spots do I need to travel to get from centimeters to meters. How many spots do I have to travel? Come on. How many spots do I have to travel? Two. Two. Okay. So what that means is that i got to take that 200 centimeters and actually divide by those powers of 10 that I traveled left. Well, if I divide by one power of 10, it's going to take my decimal from here, and it's going to move it right there. And then if I'm going to divide by another power of 10 to go from this position... So this one, I've got to divide by 10 again, and it puts my decimal right there. The amount of decimal places that I moved was congruent or analogous or comparable or the same as the number of positions I moved in that list, right? Does that make sense? Okay. So if I knew I moved two spots here, then when I have 200 centimeters and I want to go to meters, move it one, two, and it gives me 2.0 meters. Okay? What if I have 1.23 kilometers and I want to get to centimeters? Where would kilometers put me? It's going to put me right there, right? I want to get to centimeters right there, correct? So I need to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spots, right? So now I move from kilo to centi to the right, correct? So I need to move my decimal five spots. So when I get my decimal here, I've moved two spots, right? Now what do I need to do? I need to add three zeros to be placeholders. And that gives me centimeters, so I have 123,000 centimeters in 1.23 kilometers. Does that make sense, everybody? Now you can do the same thing. You can do... You can do 1.23 kilometers over one times. Now, if I know how many meters are in a kilometer? For every one kilometer, I have kilo, kilo, kilo. Means a thousand, doesn't it? Will these kilometers cancel out? Okay. Now, if I've got meters here and I want to get to centimeters, how many centimeters are there in a meter? A hundred. So now what is this? When I do this multiplication, if I'm multiplying just multiples of ten, so here a thousand is a multiple of ten, right? A hundred is a multiple of ten, right? So I got my zeros, correct? If I take a thousand times a hundred, it's gonna give me a one and then five zeros, right? Make sense? Okay, it gives me a hundred thousand. Well if I take one point two three and multiply it by that number and that number, it's gonna give me one, two, three comma, zero, 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 which is exactly what we got by using the King Henry diet by drinking chocolate milk slider. Does that make sense? Now, one thing about this. This only works in this fashion 
when we're talking about distances, okay? If I had like square centimeters, and I want to change that into square kilometers, I have to do a little bit of extra work, okay? And we'll talk about that later on if we have time. Um, that always gets people in trouble when they get to like a geometry class because they think, well, if I've got centimeters squared or cubic centimeters, and then I want to move to cubic meters, then I just need to move it two spots to the left. And that will actually be four spots too short. Okay, so we'll talk about that later on. Um, some of these other questions. So if you guys want to use that, use it. If you're a person that wants to use this process, by all means, use it. doesn't matter to me. Okay, both are going to be the same. Um, let's do this euro one, $79 to euros. You guys know what a euro is? Yeah, it's a number in English. Okay, so that's their... They're equivalent to uh, our U.S. $1, okay? Now, do you understand that when you go to the bank, you say, I'm gonna, I want to exchange my money for do from dollars to euros? It's not a one-to-one -one exchange. Does that make sense? Okay, well, it depends on what the markets are doing, okay? Right now, if we Google what the euro is, okay, so one euro right now today is 1.10 United States dollars, Okay? Meaning that the dollar is worth more than the euro. Does that make sense? So I can buy more with the United States dollar than I can buy with the euro. Okay? Um, and usually when our economy, not usually, always when our economy is doing better, the dollar is generally the, the largest or most, um, most worthy currency in the world. Okay? Um, so if I go to the bank, and I have $79, and I convert that for euros, okay, it said for every one euro, sorry, one euro was 1.1 US dollars. Does that make sense? So if I take 79 and divide by 1.1, .1, it's going to give me 71.82 euros. I can't draw the euro symbol. Uh, but 71.82 euros. So $79 gives me 71 euros, 72-ish euros. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, if I had euros, let's say I have 71.82 euros, and I multiply it by this number, without doing any math, what's that going to fit back to me? $79. So I can undo that conversion using the reciprocal. Okay? Um, keep plugging away on that homework assignment, 2-6. Um, on Monday, my hope is to, uh, to move on to percents. Oh, no. Try to simplify percents for you. Okay? But what's the key, uh, well, it's not a prefix anymore, but in percent, you hear what word? Point. Cent, right? Oh. Cent or centi refers to? 100. So percent is right over 100, right? No, it's just, uh, just the one that was open yesterday. Okay. So if you got that done, no homework. 